Hi guys, thank you all so much for tuning in today. Um, for this video, I've decided to share a little bit more of an emotional and candid story time of my journey to becoming a full-time artist. I know I've made a few other videos where I go through like tips and advice on how to have an art career, but I think for this one, I want to be a little bit more honest and vulnerable with you guys. I want to tell you guys of all the moments where I dealt with a lot of um, negativity and discouragement and self-doubt because I know a lot of you guys watching this right now are probably still young adults still in school and you're about to enter the next major chapter of your lives where you have to make these big decisions like you know do I want to go to college do I want to go to art school what do I want to study what do I want to major in uh, what type of career do I want to have you know how do I actually go about making my dreams come true, what are the steps I take to actually fulfill my life's purpose. And these are completely huge, overwhelmingly daunting decisions that could steer your future one way or the other. So I definitely empathize with that feeling of kind of stress and intimidation. And I've been through all of, all of the things you guys are going through right now. And I just thought it would be really appropriate to share this type of story time with you guys. I also wanted to quickly thank Microsoft for supporting my channel and supporting the art community. Um, when they reached out to me to collaborate, I was super excited. I, w I got super dorky because I have been a PC fangirl since I was like 10 when I got my first computer ever. And I've been using um, Microsoft and Microsoft computers um, all throughout my life and the video you're watching now actually all of my YouTube videos all of the content I create all the emails I send everything I do related to art and my entire career is done on this old PC that my friend and I built back in 2012 so it, it's still running after all these years and coincidentally I was actually trying to search for an option that was a bit more portable but like equally powerful like getting all the tasks I need to get done you know I like edit videos and stuff so I was really really pleasantly surprised with the Microsoft Surface and I've had the chance to use it for about two weeks now and I am completely in love with it and real quick before I begin I just want to let you guys know that this is going to be a two-part video series and it's going to be a lot more interactive so after you're done watching this if you have any further questions about art careers or school or life or anything uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below and in about two weeks I'm going to be making a follow-up video where I'll answer some of my favorite questions so feel free to speak up and share your stories share your questions um, I can't wait to hear them also I'm going to have a link in my description if you want to check out some other cool videos from uh, fellow youtubers and creators who also have their own very unique and motivating stories to share okay let's begin so let's start at the very beginning. Um, ever since I could remember, as a kid, I've always wanted to be an artist. I was obsessed with Disney films growing up. I think after I saw my first Disney film, it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I was around six or seven years old. Um, I had decided that I wanted to work at Disney one day and be an animation artist. Although I don't think at the time I really understood what careers at Disney entailed, but that was my dream and you could have asked anyone who was near me, like I couldn't shut up about it. I wanted to be an artist. Even growing up and going through grade school, um, I, I would always like come home after school, rush through all my homework uh, just so I can free up time to do art and instead of going out and playing with the other kids, I would lock myself in my room and draw and that was like the happiest time of my day was when I got to be by myself in my own little world and just create. In high school, I would often... Um, <laughs> sorry mom and dad uh, for telling you this, but I would often like sneak onto um, their computer after they went to sleep and I would download Photoshop and teach myself how to use Adobe Photoshop and I was really into graphic design. I'd make these like posters and banners by blending photos together and applying filters to them. I also dabbled with like HTML and CSS. I mean very very basic stuff, but I basically made many little websites um, basically containing a portfolio of all of my artwork and to me that was super Super fun so I actually wanted to go into art school and study um, either drawing or painting or honestly graphic design or just something creative when it came time to apply for colleges and take the SATs my parents sat me down and said if you 
go for a career in the arts, you have maybe one in a million chance of succeeding. But if you go for a career in something more technical, like you know engineering or law or pre-med or business, um, you will have a way higher chance of securing a stable job and be able to financially support yourself. I understood, like I didn't blame them. I think if I were in their position and I had sacrificed so much um, and worked so hard to bring my entire family overseas and give my children the opportunities that I couldn't have, um, and you know, if I had also grown up really poor and struggled, I would not want my child to struggle the same way. So I understood where they were coming from and they were just looking out for me, they were worried for me, they wanted to make sure that I was going to have a comfortable, safe life. At the time I thought, you know what, um, I'll just keep doing art as a hobby, yeah, I'll major in something more technical and reliable in college and let's see where it goes. Since I had an interest already in graphic design and also had a childhood dream of becoming an animator artist and also um, I was fairly good at math. I thought that computer science would be the right major for me. It kind of aligned all of my interests and I thought maybe through computer science I would find a segue into becoming an animator one day and still working with something technical but also getting to utilize my creative side. And as soon as I finished like my first day of classes, I knew how incredibly wrong I was. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. It was less heavy on the creative side and a lot more heavy on the technical side. I just remember like thinking, you know, what am I gonna do? Am I ever gonna find a job in this industry? Am I gonna flunk out of school? Like so many things were just completely completely like struggles for me and I felt like everyone else all my friends took to it so naturally and for me it just took me like three times as much effort and time to absorb information or understand basic concepts. For example, I loved using Photoshop. By then I had been kind of self-taught Photoshop for a few years. I was able to be fairly proficient in using all the tools. So I took a computer graphics class because I thought it kind of you know, flowed nicely from my Photoshop experience. And in the class, we weren't using Photoshop. We were basically trying to program the Photoshop software. <laughs> so it was super hard. I remember we had to learn this language called OpenGL and to this day, I like do not even understand it or how I ever survived that class. So by the time I graduated, although I was not talented enough at coding to become a software developer, there was a certain role called PM that I believed I would be a great fit for and I was really lucky to land a job as a PM. And a PM is basically a project manager. So although I didn't code very well, I still believed I had enough technical understanding to be able to collaborate in a group environment and work with teams of other developers and work with them to build something as a team. I was really excited about it. You know, it paid well, it was stable. My parents were finally relieved and they weren't worried about me anymore. Much like my illusions of college, uh, my illusions of what this job would entail were very different from reality. I thought I would be able to at least be a little bit creative because I was kind of the overseer of the entire uh, life life cycle of a product or a feature and I thought I would have some sort of creative decision-making power um, but instead you know my days were just filled with like meetings and um, PowerPoint presentations, writing specifications, uh, calling this team and then calling that team, putting out fires, getting into debates like it was basically a day full of errands and I definitely wasn't skilled enough naturally to be a good PM. I, I would see my coworkers and they would be so excellent at their jobs. They would be able to bring out the best in everyone they worked with and just really carry their entire teams forward and I was kind of just struggling just like I was in school. It just wasn't the right fit for me. Although I got to work with designers and help other cross teams build features and build the product I was working on, um, I never got to do anything hands-on myself. I was just kind of the organizer of everything. So I really, really missed being able to work on something creative and you know working on something tangible all day, getting lost in the inspiration of it and then having something tangible to show for my day at the end of the day. Like sometimes eight hours would fly by and I was in meetings all day and I had no proof that I was even productive that day and that drove me crazy. And even though I wasn't able to realize my full creative potential at work, I also didn't fully utilize my time at home 
to do creative things. A huge reason was, and I think a lot of other artists watching this out there might relate, is that in order to create art, I have to have a good headspace going into it. I have to be energetic, I can't be exhausted, um, I have to feel some level of joy and inspiration, I have to have like a refreshed mind that's ready to conquer you know a painting for me at the time every time i'd come home from work i would be so exhausted i was not interested in like painting for three hours after a long day at work all i wanted to do was sit on the couch watch netflix and veg out slowly over the years i just felt less and less inspired and i was making less and less work and the few pieces that i did create you could tell there was just not as much passion or effort being put into them at the time um i didn't have an instagram or youtube i don't even think instagram was that popular but i had still a little facebook album that i shared with my friends of my artwork and i had started that album i think when i was graduating high school and I remember every week I used to upload new pieces and I would love hearing like the encouraging comments my friends gave me. And at some point it had been like, you know, six months or a year since I had last posted anything because I just wasn't creating artwork that I was proud of or wasn't creating enough pieces in general. I just kind of started falling into this downward spiral routine of just, you know, the nine to five schedule. And yeah, it just was kind of the sad reality at the time. And you know, I think, Timing is everything and the universe works in mysterious ways because right when I was kind of at my lowest in terms of my interest and my abilities in art, um, I met this wonderful girl named Shirley through a friend and she happened to be a curator for this tiny gallery in San Francisco at the time. When she and I became Facebook friends, she saw my album of old artworks I had posted and she was gracious enough to invite me to be a part of this group show that she was curating and I remember like that feeling of like all of a sudden all this anticipation and enthusiasm and like inspiration, it pretty much rekindled um, you know, that joy, that childlike wonder that I had lost. It was just such an amazing feeling. I was so honored that she invited me. I accepted right away and for the month leading up to the show, it was like I was a kid again. Um, I would rush home after work. I wouldn't do any social events or, you know, go to happy hours. I would just go home immediately, lock myself in my room and create art and it was just the best feeling it was like seeing an old friend again I also luckily enough and I still can't believe this happened but I sold both of the pieces that I prepared for the show and at the time like I was so taken aback I did not expect that at all I thought it was just it, it was an honor enough just to even be displayed in a gallery and be able to you know hang out with other artists and just you know attend the opening night and just be a part of the art scene. I really didn't expect myself to even sell anything and even though I didn't make that much money off of it, it was you know very cheaply priced, but just the fact that someone connected with my artwork enough and someone like connected with my ideas and my own concepts enough to want to pay for my work and hang it up in their home, like that feeling was so incredibly fulfilling. That one little show, that one little opportunity that Shirley gave me, hi Shirley, I love you. Um, that was the catalyst for my entire art career. Um, I remember after that show, I had so much confidence. I opened my first Instagram account and it's still alive to this day. You guys might know it's Happy D Artist. And I started having the courage to share my work on a public forum outside of just my own friend circle. Even though at the time I had like less than 100 followers, um, I noticed strangers were following me and commenting on my artwork and responding well to it and sending me positive, encouraging words. And every time I read something like that, it would fuel me to keep creating. So ever since that show, I just started making more and more artworks. You know, I rekindled that love and um, it coincided with me being less and less motivated at work. And I really considered had wanted to consider quitting for a while just because I was so bad at my job and you know I wasn't enjoying it but when the art career started building up and I started um, looking at other artists for example on Instagram and seeing what their day-to-day -day life is like and following other artists on social media and just getting a taste of the allure of like an art career um, I became so inspired and so tempted that eventually I 
I just decided to quit. Like I put a date on the calendar and I left my job and I was going to devote all of my time and energy into pursuing art full time. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, basically starting a full-time art career in an industry in which I had zero experience, zero connections, zero knowledge, um, it was not easy the first year. I was lucky that I had saved up some money from all those years working in tech, so I did have a financial cushion to fall back on because that first year I did not make nearly enough money to cover my living expenses. I had to dip into savings. My parents were constantly worried about me. They really didn't agree with my choice to quit my job. Also, most importantly, I realized how far behind I was skill-wise. Like, I had taken a break for a few years from actually practicing and improving my skills and I just simply wasn't as good at painting as I wanted to be and it was so incredibly frustrating. I spent a lot of, actually all of my time during that first year um, in two ways. The first was trying to find any way I can to make some income. So I would go to art fairs, street fairs, I would apply to like hundreds of galleries. I'd email every gallery I could all around the world and few if any even replied, let alone accepted me. The second thing I was working on was trying to really improve my skills. I didn't want to spend my savings on art school so I would try to take affordable classes here and there if I could find them or um, free classes online. I watched so much YouTube. I learned so much from YouTube tutorials and I would just practice on my own whenever I got the chance. And all the while I was trying to post more on social media. I definitely wanted to grow my social media. I only had Instagram at the time and it just simply wasn't growing fast enough. You know, I was so intimidated by all these art accounts that had hundreds of thousands of followers and you know, I was over here like barely getting a thousand or like seeing only a few followers um, growing each day and it was just so easy during that time to get discouraged. I often doubted my decision. I wondered if I made a mistake. I wondered um, if my future would ever improve, if I was heading in the right direction, if I would ever find success, if I would ever even make minimum wage again with my art. And yeah, it was a very trying time. But you know what? I never gave up because I simply love doing art and for me it was a worthy sacrifice, it was a worthy risk. I remember even though my Instagram wasn't that huge yet, I became inspired to start a YouTube channel thanks to the encouragement of my wonderful friend Lena Dania, so thank you girl! And um, at the time I didn't have any YouTube views, like barely any subscribers, although I had to pick up video filming and editing skills all from scratch, um, I fell in love with it and I loved documenting the life cycle of a painting and watching it back myself. So even though my audience wasn't that big, um, I still kept making YouTube videos every few weeks, pretty much for my own amusement, honestly. And you know, slowly but surely over time, everything started to improve. You know, I didn't have like one hit or one viral post that, you know, m made me an, an overnight success. Like it was honestly just me constantly persevering and posting content and trying to produce quality content. My YouTube was starting to grow. My Instagram was starting to grow. I also um, started a Patreon page along the way, which was amazing because um, from the financial support from Patreon, I was able to pick up even more skills and free up more time to to really, really invest in my career. For example, I finally downloaded and learned how to use Adobe Premiere and I was able to produce videos more efficiently and of higher quality and just really boost my YouTube to the next level. Also, I noticed that um, I was getting more gallery replies. So galleries were actually letting me participate in their group shows and I could see my work hung up at galleries. Um, I was getting more commissions um, and selling more originals and prints and everything just kind of, you know, was like a positive feedback loop. Everything kind of positively influenced and nourished each other. And during that time, I also grew so much in confidence. A lot of it was because of amazing people like you guys, like my viewers and my followers who always sent me um, motivation and encouragement and I took to that really well and I was finally confident enough to be a little less camera shy and I started recording more voiceovers and sharing more of my personality, my my story, my thoughts um, with anyone who wanted to listen and I was so fortunate to 
find a family of viewers who really responded well to what I had to say and you know recently I was super super um, lucky that I got to finally surpass a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube when I got my you know plaque in the mail and I never thought I would have ever held something like that and it was just so incredibly humbling and I also took the time to finally create a professional website that not only was a portfolio for my works but also an e-commerce platform where I could have a, you know a shop to sell my work and a lot of these skills I ended up picking up along the way were not related to painting or drawing at all. But nowadays, my day consists of maybe 50% or less of actually drawing at the table or painting at the easel. The rest of the time is pretty much running my art business. You know, I, I don't have any assistants or team of people to help me, so I have to be not only like a painter and illustrator, but I have to be my own business manager, my own bookkeeper, my own video editor, my own photographer, my own um, print packager and shipper, if that <laughs> makes sense. Over the years, like, I would constantly ask myself, and people would ask me this too, like, do you regret investing all of those years in, you know, learning tech and working in tech and now you're in an industry that's completely different. Like, do you ever regret not going to art school and not maybe utilizing your youth more to practice art and get like a head start? You know, for a while I really did doubt myself. I really did wonder like maybe I did make a mistake. Maybe I should have gone to art school in the beginning and, you know, just not wasted all those years. And now I realize like, all of the skills and experiences that I picked up from being in tech actually are crucial and help me so much today in in maintaining and growing my art business. As a PM, you know, I wasn't really good at, at the time, but little did I know I actually picked up a lot of skills in managing deadlines, managing big projects, managing schedules. I was able to stay organized and that really helps me now um, when it's related to art business deadlines. In computer science I was never really great at coding but I still became, I still improved a lot in my technical aptitude. So nowadays when I learn new things like you know I learned Adobe Premiere on my own, I learned how to set up, use and debug my printer on my own, I learned how to build and maintain my website and I I get to kind of utilize that technical aptitude to really save time. Like I'm able to pick up new things very easily and I'm not ever intimidated by learning new technology. And I think a lot of that confidence came from my experience in the tech industry. You know, I really don't regret it, especially thinking about this now and recently. I think everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't change the course of my path in getting to where I am today at all because I think everything I learned, including all the mistakes I made, were very valuable lessons. Another great one is I was kind of, I got used to the feeling of failure. Like even when I failed or didn't succeed or didn't get good grades or didn't excel at my job, um, over time I got used to it and I didn't let that really stop me. And that's how I was able to overcome all those difficult times in my art career when I wasn't feeling successful, I still manage to have the mindset to keep going. And so, yeah, I really, really do not regret anything and I'm really grateful for the path that I was able to go on and I think all of you guys watching this now, this is my biggest takeaway I want you guys to know. Like, it's okay to be doubtful, it's okay to be afraid, it's okay to be discouraged. Um, those are all things we have to overcome to become stronger. You know, like some of the best decisions I made were decisions that were rooted almost in a lot of fear, a lot of risk, and me mustering the courage and the strength to overcome that fear um, and make those hard decisions were what led me to eventually great things. And so I think when you're a young adult and you're watching this, don't be afraid to go down a path that might seem a little more difficult, or even if you're on a path right now that you don't see kind of the benefit or you don't know where it's heading. Um, in in the ultimate long run, like the ultimate bigger picture, um, this might not be a mistake. It might actually just be a stepping stone towards the right direction. 
All right, that is my story of my journey to becoming a full-time artist. Thank you all so much for putting up with me for this long. If you've made it to the end, um, congratulations and I applaud you and I wish I could give you a big hug for watching me for this long. Once again, just a quick reminder, if you want to ask me any questions and maybe have it answered in my next video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, also, you can check out some other really motivating um, story time videos and very um, encouraging stories from other creators. I'll leave that in the link below as well. And thank you again Microsoft Surface for supporting my channel and supporting the art community and honestly supporting and empowering so many young adults out there, myself included, um, and for making such a great computer for me to work on and get all my tasks done. You guys are really awesome and I'm so humbled and grateful. And thank you all so much for watching this um, and for your continued support and for subscribing. You guys are the best and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye!